You ain't nothing without good help. You can have a good market, have good equipment, but if you ain't got good Welcome back, that chipper guy here. We got a great video for you today. My friend Matt came from Grand Rapids, picked me up. We flew to Ohio. I met this guy, Corey, a couple years ago at Paul Bunyan. He said he had this big chipping outfit. We've been in contact ever since. Finally got the opportunity to go down and see him in his chipping outfit. Met his father. Incredible people, incredible family. Wonderful daughters, a cute little boy. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the video. It's worth a watch.
that actually caught a chip and come to existence in 1973. And uh, that's when I first seen my first Mobark chipper. And I thought, well, I've seen that. Because we loved all of her life. And dad before me. And <clears throat> we go back to uh, that hauled the first load of paper wood into the Chillicothe paper mill in 1949. But now that was short wood. You had to peel it in winter and summer. And, and try peeling hardwood in the wintertime. And with a drawing knife, like you shoot horses with, you could get about maybe two eight-ton loads a week. And uh, of course, went from that into long wood, and then from the, with straight trucks, then we got tandems. And then in 1973, when I seen that, uh, Mobark chipper that they bought down over Chilcothy to demonstrate it. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do the rest of my life right there. I ain't going to do that long wood stuff no more. <laughs> and anyway, and, uh, so we got the first chipper in 73. Let's see. Then we went from the, you know, back then we used to go with horses. Yep. And load everything by hand. Didn't have no loaders, nothing like that. But then we got the first Prentice loader. The printer slower come way before the, uh, the chipper did. It would have been in the, when it first started building, whatever that was. But uh, I don't want to bore you to death with it. But oh, no. Anyway, it, uh, we went from that, and then uh, from the Longwood, and then I seen that chipper, and that's what I'm going to do right there. And at that time, Mead was really hyper about, you know, putting loggers in the chipper business. And uh, you know, they financed everything we did. And uh, no interest. And it took so much a ton out. We didn't have to pay payments for more. It was just so much a ton. Because we'd always get in trouble with our payments in the wintertime. Because it couldn't work. But anyway, when the chipper come, and we, you know, man, we was really in high gear because now we could get four loads a day. Four loads of chipper. And I, I, I'm talking about working from daylight to way after dark mm -hmm. for four loads. We, we was, and then with semi loads. Now we come went from the straight truck to the semi tandem. Now we got tractor trailers, and you know them were 24, 25 ton loads. And after, you know, after a while we thought, man, this four loads could be a better way. And we go down south and, and uh, went to Ben Babb's job. He was a, a Lucky Robinson, was, was Ben Babb's guy that he worked with at Mobart. And we watched Ben Babb work. Holy cow, that man was getting 12, 14 loads a day. And I thought, he ain't got the people we got. You know, we got, I thought, maybe I'm wrong, but he had a good job. But, you know, I'm thinking he's chipping all premium wood and all that. No. And we had a lot better wood than he did. Our ground was a little rougher. But anyway, I thought, if he can do that, we can. We watched him, and from that first year that we went down with Ben Babb's job, we went from like 30, 25, 30,000 ton a year up to 100,000 ton after we watched Ben Babb work. Hmm. And then, um, you know, more chippers, more horsepower. Like I said, we started with that Model 18, but that didn't last long. Then there were 380 Cummins, left-handed. That didn't last long either. Then the V12 Detroit, that wasn't a good one either. And then when they put the 600 or 1,000 horse, that's what we needed. Mm -hmm. And then 205, it's whenever Corey come into the to the bins. And, you know, well, in the meantime, we had grapple skitters. You know, of course, we didn't load nothing by hand anymore. But the grapple skitters, and I don't know them things wouldn't work in this part of the world, not a grapple skitter. But I thought, well, maybe we'll try one. That's the last cable skitter we ever bought. Yeah. But uh, then after 205, mm -hmm. you know, Corey come in. Of course, you know, he's younger. Yeah, and he's got better ideals. I don't want to tell him that, but it's, it's the truth. And I did have enough sense to kind of stand back out of the way and let him go. And from 2005, you can take it from there. Yeah. So did you graduate in 2005? Yeah. From high school. I tried to get him going to school, but he was 
uh, at the end. And uh, but our production is this skyrocket adapter. And he took part. Six or seven skitters out into the fleet. Oh. Then uh, we got the newer more barks. We've had had some older ones, had the slide booms on. We got them got rid of them and then uh, then we just bought the tree in sixteen. And uh, seemed to seem to like it, that's pretty good. Then the D barker. Yeah. I was against that thing too. Yeah, then we had Dick D barker. Yeah, he yeah. said we could get hooked him with a contract. Not my life when we get that thing because that other is bad enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, well, it come down to either get D Barker or you got a job. Yeah. Well, maybe I don't want to go back to Longwood. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, D Barker's yeah. not good, but they something we can live with. I have to. It's yeah. pain blue for reason. D Barker blues. I hope we get a try that Mobark people. Yeah. You said Morgan was up here looking. Yeah. I was supposed to bring one down. Right. Yeah. It's on track and everything. Just like yeah. Yeah. We like the looks of your, your guys' chipper, but they're so heavy. Yeah, there's 120,000 pounds on three axes back there. I know. They had one of them down. And oh, hard to move them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Of course, when we had that one down, we didn't have the 850 nosery either. Yeah, you gotta have a bigger iron to get it around. Oh, yeah. You you have, yeah. but it's just a hassle. Yep. So this shop here, when we built this shop, the meat people it was me that time. We didn't need a garage. That just hard work done. Yeah. I thought to myself, they never laid down in the mud, and they never had to have something in the morning. You go to a shop. If you worked out of a shop. You know what I'm talking about. You do too. If you work strictly out of the shop, you will go stone broke. Yeah. Yes. You got to turn wrenches on yourself a little bit. Yep. Yeah. That's about the history of us. Dad was a logger before me. A logger before him. I did try to get him to go to school. <laughs> He's been, been with me. Well, honestly, the, the way of punishing him when he was growing up, not letting him go to work with him. <laughs> not letting him go. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. He got trouble at school one time, and he don't cause here cause him much trouble at all. This is just a minor little thing, and he was out for there too. And I didn't pay him much, and uh, uh, we go home that evening. And I told him, I said, well, since you're out of school, you ain't gonna get no pay. <laughs> okay, okay. And then I go home on Friday. He said, Dad, why don't you go do Monday? I said, I'm going to go to work. I said, what do you mean? He said, what are you going to do without all this free labor? <laughs> <laughs> First time I put him on payroll. And we were going home, and he's sitting over there looking at his check. I'm driving, and he looked at his check, and he said, Dad, did we work six days? I said, yeah. Well, he said, you only paid me for five. I said, no, it's probably. Let me see. I said, no, you got paid for six. Well, he said, the money's less than it was before. I said, well, we had to put you on payroll. He said, well, I don't want to wear this payroll stuff. <laughs> <laughs> taxes. <laughs> taxes. Yeah. One whole day went for taxes. Yeah. 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 But anyway, that, that's about the logger and farmers like with us. Yeah. We have a good farm because it takes a good job to support a farm in this part of the world. And Mead was wide open then as far as, you know, what do you want? Well, this is an example. We got still got over six with six out there. Spotter truck. I think it was like 20-some thousand. They was going to take it all around. And I saw a demonstrator. We didn't spot no vans. Although that didn't work either. And after I seen Ben Babb's job, that, well, I knew it worked. So, like I said, we could usually pick up something off any guy's logging job. If all I want to do is just see what's wrong, just look at my own. I can find lots of stuff we do wrong. Right. But once we start spotting vans in that warrior truck, or six for six, it, well, you know, I didn't want to pay you know, 20 some thousand for it. Now, and, and 
the ranger told me, he said, no, he said, uh, it'll be a quarter a ton that will be taken out of your pay. And, and after, you know, we said, yeah, we'll take it and all that. And we got a quarter a ton raise for our wood. In other words, you know, they, instead of taking out my pay, they give me another quarter a ton. Why is that, though? To cover that quarter they're just going to take out. Because yeah, they wanted us to have it, just to prove to us that it did work. Huh. And get this, hard hats. He, this way before he was the board. But we never wore a hard hat. Never. They made a deal with us. We will pay you 50 cents a ton, extra a week, if you just wear your hard hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do it. There was condition with it. Any time the ranger comes on your job and just one of your guys don't have a hard hat on, it's going to cost you the 50 cents a ton for the whole week. Yep. Well, heck, we was up to almost a thousand ton a week then. And I'm thinking, holy cow, that's $500. I told every one of my guys, I don't care if you never wear a hard hat again, but the first time you cost me a week's 50 cents a ton, all I'm going to tell you is it's coming out of your pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you wear them or not. Never get cost me that 50 cents. Everybody. Now you just, you wouldn't dare go without heart. Yeah. You ain't nothing without good help. You can have a good market, have good equipment, but if you ain't got good people, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. Now, I want to tell Scotty there, you got to always look at your people. You need them. They don't necessarily need you. They can go right down the road if they're good enough and start to work the next day. Yeah. You get that man. Treat him the best you can. Walking up, I think yeah. that